Hello and welcome back to SciTi Tech. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a very simple step-by-step -step water level detector device with using four BC547 transistors. Let's get started. And these are the items that you're going to need to make for this project. The items you're going to need is these two pieces of cardboard, which will act as the housing to hold this perf board. And what will go on the perf board will be these four 220 ohm resistors, also four colored LEDs, one red, one yellow, and two green. And you will also need four DC547 transistors. And you will also need a 9 volt battery clip and a glass which will contain water and you're going to need these wires to act as electrodes to be able to measure the level of the water and this thick copper wire to act as the common electrode and now let's go ahead and assemble this circuit and let's get started first i'm going to take these four bc547 transistors and put them into the perf board place them in position where they look just like this Next, take all of the leads of the emitter and bend it over just like this. And there we go, the emitter is bent. Next, I'm going to take some bridge wire and place it just like this. And take some more bridge wire and place it like that. And there, it shall look just like this. Next, I'm going to go ahead and solder the emitter into place, solder the bridge wire, and then solder bridge all of the emitters. Just like this. Next, take four 220 ohm resistors, place them on the perf board right next to the collector of the transistor. Next, solder into place with one lead vent. There we go. Now cut off the excess. Next, solder in all of the collectors into place. There we go. All of the collectors are now soldered into place. Next, bend, bend the collector's lead over to the resistor. Solder bridge it to the resistor, just like this, and cut off the excess. And there, it should look just like that. Next, we need to solder the LEDs into place, and you're going to need to place the cathode of the LED facing the resistor. Put it into this orientation, just like this and repeat the same process with the other LEDs. And there we go, it should look just like this. Next, you're going to need to bend the cathode of the LEDs to the resistor, just like this. Next, bend the anodes of the LEDs just like this. And there we go, it should look just like this. Next, solder bridge the cathode of the LEDs to the resistor. Just like this. Cathodes and resistors are now soldered together. Next, cut off the excess. And there we go, it should look just like this. Next, I'm going to take another bridge wire and place it next to the anodes and solder bridge all of the anodes together. And there you have it, the anodes of the LEDs are now bridged together. And it shall look just like this. Next, I'm going to take these four wires and connect it to the circuit. These will be my electrodes. And I'm going to connect them to the base of the transistor. 
just like this. Bend over the wire, and now bend the base of the transistor onto the wire, just like this. Solder it into place, and now solder bridge it to the wire. There we go, and it should look just like this. Repeat the same process three more times. And there, it should look just like this. Place the final wire. And connect that to the base of that transistor. Solder bridge it together. And there we go, it should look just like this. And there, the circuit is almost complete. Next, you're gonna to need to take a thick copper gauge wire, remove all of the insulation, just like this. Make sure it's perfectly straight. Solder tin it, just like this. And then solder it to the anode of the LEDs, just like this. Next, you're gonna to need to take your nine volt battery clip and solder it to the circuit. Solder the positive to the anode of the LEDs. Then solder the negative wire to the emitter of the transistor. And there, the circuit is now complete. And it should look just like this. Next, you're going to need to take this piece of cardboard and attach your circuit to it by using some hot glue. Hot glue it onto the cardboard, just like this. Put some hot glue on the side to glue down the wires. Repeat the same process with all three of the wires. There we go, should look just like this. Next, what you need to do is cut all of these wires to the length that you want to be able to measure the level of the water. And there we go, should look just like this. Next, what I need to do is remove the insulation on all the tips of the wires. Doing that will allow me to have proper contact with the water. There we go. Put it in a space about maybe three millimeters, just like this. Glue it into place. And repeat the same process with all of the other wires. There we go, and it should look just like this. Next, you're gonna place this piece of cardboard on top of the water glass, just like this. And then take your circuit with the cardboard Bend over the 9 volt battery to the back and place it just like this. And now hot glue it into place. And there, she'll look just like this. Now take your 9 volt battery, connect it, and now let's go ahead and test out the circuit. And there we go, I have my beaker right here full of salt water, and I'm going to go ahead and pour it into the glass. And there, it works. First LED turns on. Second LED turns on. Sort of. Pour more water, and there, now the second LED stays on. Third LED. And there you have it. Finally, the fourth LED. This indicates the glass is now full. And there we go. Watch what happens when you pull it out. It'll do this. 
A little bit of water is attached to the circuit still because of surface tension. So you just have to shake it off, just like this. And there we go, the circuit turns off. Now watch what happens when you place it in a full glass of water. The LEDs light up as predicted. This is actually really fun. I can literally do this all day. Now here's an interesting thing that I've noticed with this circuit. As you can see, the circuit works fine, but there's a small issue that could be an issue. As you can see, electrolysis is now occurring where you can see there's hydrogen gas and oxygen gas being formed from positive going to oxygen, negative going to hydrogen. And you can see the water is being separated. That's interesting and really good, but the only downside is that the oxygen is gonna corrode the copper. And as you can see, the copper is already discolored. So if you're gonna use this as a permanent water indicator, not really a good idea because it will cause your copper to corrode away and it'll become useless. If you want this to be a permanent device, I would suggest using platinum since platinum doesn't react to much of anything. But yeah, that's just a little extra tip if you ever want to do this as a permanent device. But this device, as you can see, is just made for educational uses only. And there you have it. Now you know how to make your very own water level detector device with using just a few simple components. And there you have it. Thank you for watching SciTitech. I hope you learned something new. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, click on the bell icon to be notified for future SciTitech videos. Till the next tech, goodbye.